Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see in front of me are seven dive watches. All of these watches are from my current watch collection and I collected these watches over yeah, pretty much the last three years. As you saw in the uh, vintage vaults video, there were most of my uh, high-end watches, which I'm not storing at home. But of course I have a lot more watches and also a lot of affordable watches. So I thought it would be nice to show you my little dive watch collection, which ranges from the Baltic, which you could grab at around 650 US dollars, all the way to the Submariner Starbucks, which is trading at around 18,000 US dollars. So guys, lean back, take a coffee and enjoy this short video about my dive watch collection. So I said the uh, watch which is the most affordable one is this Baltic Aquascarf 5th uh, anniversary limited edition of 200 pieces. It was released like two months ago by Baltic and sold out within the first one hour. It's a very nice uh, piece as you have an internal rotatable bezel. It comes with a premium Miyota movement in the inside, is water resistant to 200 meters, 39 millimeters in diameter and uh, quite thin. What I think is important for all my watches, I don't like thick watches on the wrist and this one comes at only 11.9 millimeters. So very nice watch, uh, I said it sold out super quick and now it's trading at yeah, maybe 900 US dollars or so, but quite significantly over retail on Chrono24. And this also shows you that even with uh, smaller budgets, it's uh, yeah possible to make some really good buys in the market and buy watches where you will not lose a lot of money and also with smaller budgets watch collecting can be quite fun. And now we come to the second piece in my dive watch collection which is the Nevada Green Chin Dev Master 1000 uh, and this is a very nice watch which I really enjoy wearing. Uh, first of all I like dive watches without a date so you just set the time, throw it on your wrist and you're ready to go. And yeah, this watch again has a very nice retro vibe with it. It's um, it's a re-edition of the original Nevada Green Chin Death Master, which was released around half a century ago, and quite a significant piece at the time. And they made this this re-edition quite nice, I must say. It comes for only uh, around 900 US dollars. It trades a little bit higher if you would buy it on Chrono24. Uh, I'm actually not even sure why because these are usually easily available on the Nevada Green Chin website. And um, this watch yeah, looks already super cool. So you can see you have this uh, cushion case, uh, cushion style case. And the diameter is 39 millimeters. And the thickness is also quite uh, low, I think around 13 millimeters, which is fully okay, especially considering that this watch has a water resistance of 1000 meters and comes also with a helium escape valve on the side that you can see over here. Yeah, And then on top I really enjoy this uh, stainless steel bezel, looks really cool, gives a great tool watch character to the watch and on top you have these Pac-Man indices all around the dial. Super legible, the watch uh, wears great on my 6.5 inch wrist, screw down crown and just an awesome quality feel. So for the price of 900 US dollars, this again I would say is a really really good buy and you will definitely enjoy this watch. And now we come to the third watch. So after we had two micro brands, uh, time for a bigger company now and that's of course Seiko. So here I have the SPB 153 or the so-called Captain Willard. I think I have this watch now for maybe 
one year, one and a half years, something like that in my collection. And it's also usually my go-to watch if I want to wear a cheaper watch on the wrist, but still feel like I want to wear something with history, which uh, other watch collectors will recognize right away. And yeah, of course, again, we have a cushion case. The watch is uh, also um, not too expensive. Uh, I, I bought it for the full retail price. Unfortunately, here at the time when I bought it, I think that was uh, not too long after the release, the, the, the dealer, which is called Watch House, they were pretty tough on their discounts. They actually gave me 0% discount, so I had to pay the full retail price, which on top was a bit higher, I think, in Dubai. So I bought this watch for maybe $1,200, somewhere around that, which is, of course, quite a, quite a high price for a Seiko, yeah? Um, I mean, we all know the Seiko 5s and so on in the price range of $300. So if you pick up a Seiko for more than $1,000, it's definitely a different feeling. Yeah, But again, of course, for the price, this watch offers uh, great features. It's also 200 meter water resistant, comes in this very nice uh, green, olive green color with the alloy olive green diver's bezel and the green sunburst dial has a date feature and again is not too thick yeah and especially for a seiko watch this is really really nice and inside is a seiko in-house movement of course as seiko produces all their movements in-house it's the 6r35 and another nice feature about this watch is that it comes with a big power reserve of 70 hours so definitely of one of my favorite watches, um, but you will probably hear me that uh, saying today quite often. Good, so this is my uh, Seiko Captain Willard. And now we come to the fourth piece of my collection of dive watches. And this is a very special piece for me. This is the Mido Decompression Timer 1961. I bought this piece uh, during mid of 2020 when we were all in the lockdown, so quite depressing times as you might remember and then Mido launched this bright and colorful watch uh, which I was immediately hyped for and it was quite a challenge to, to buy this piece. So um, as said in, in Dubai the, the ADs are a little bit difficult to deal with so I have the feeling Whenever there's a watch where there's a little bit of demand for it, they will make it so tough for you to get those pieces and they really try to squeeze the last dollar out of you. But yeah, in the end I was able to manage this piece luckily in Dubai and I think for the price point of around 1250 US dollars this was also a great buy. And this watch is actually also trading a lot higher on the second hand market. So if you would want to pick up, especially now this black version, which became quite rare, I think there's maybe like four pieces available on Chrono 24 of this one, you would pay probably around 2000 US dollars nowadays for it. And yeah, the watch comes in a really, really nice uh, case size. Uh, I think it's uh, 40 millimeters, 40.5 millimeters uh, it's also 200 meters water resistant has this decompression scale on the dial with this super short hour hand and the long uh, minutes hand which you would use then for the decompression scale has a alloy bezel insert which will probably also fade over time so we'll give this watch a really nice vintage vibe i think after a few years i think you can already see that the colors faded a little bit but of course we have very strong uh, sunlight here in dubai so this will speed up the process probably quite a lot and actually i'm also wearing this watch quite a lot as it fits so well on my wrist and always gives me good mood with all the bright colors yeah the movement inside is basically an in-house movement as it's an eta movement produced by the swatch group has 70 hours of power reserve and the date function makes it by that also a really good daily beater good so now uh, we jump a little bit higher you could say we had like these uh Maybe not like lowest level tier class, but um, definitely affordable tier class of watches from 650 
US dollars all the way to 1250 US dollars. All four watches, I would say again, are great buys. All watches have something special about them. And if I can give you a little bit of advice from my learnings from collecting watches over the years, with these kind of uh, watches in this price range, you get really good value for money. You just need to keep your eyes open and search for the right buys. But even with a small budget, you will find really, really good uh, watches in the market. So then the next tier level would be now this uh, Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue. This comes at around 3,800 US dollars. So this I would say is entry level luxury already. Um, Tudor, great brand uh, from, the, from the Rolex group. So uh, they deliver definitely quality. They are quite long in the market and they know what they do. This watch has also an in-house movement, of course, the Tudor MT5402. This uh, also is COSC certified, so what definitely differentiates now the luxury timepieces from the more affordable ones. So that means this movement is tested and it runs at minus four to plus six seconds a day. It uh, has a power reserve of 70 hours, so very strong, very precise, automatic winding, uh, really, really great. Then the watch itself is in 39 millimeters diameter, so again, fits very well on my 6.5 inch wrist. Alloy bezel insert in the blue color, and the bezel has a really nice uh, sound to it. And also works very very well so great watch i put it on this uncle seiko bracelet i think i <laughs> mentioned this now in the last four videos or so is it seems like there's quite a high demand i had it before on the nato strap which i like uh, i but i'm more of a bracelet guy and i thought about getting maybe the uh, original tudor bracelet but I, I think the brace, the original Tudor bracelet, I don't know, for me looks a little bit boring. And then I found this Uncle Seiko bracelet that you can order for around 160 US dollars. Very easy to install on the watch and gives it a even more interesting retro vibe. Yeah, I mean, the whole watch is inspired from a retro diver and then putting it on a Jubilee bracelet, which also has more retro vibes, I think, just fits so well to the watch and I can also tell you I own this watch maybe also for around a year now and before I put it on the Uncle Seiko bracelet I was never using the watch actually because again I said I, I found it a bit boring I got a bit pulled into it as so many youtubers we were reporting great value for money watch then of course I thought it will help my profile if I buy it from the AD just to be completely honest with you and then I had it at home and I never used it. And yeah, once I changed the bracelet, now I definitely love the looks of it and I use it really a lot. As you also probably saw in the last videos, yeah? Gets a lot of wrist time. Good, and as said, uh, Tudor is for me basically maybe a bit the entry level, but they are pushing heavily in the market, uh, especially recently with all the latest releases uh, to step up the ladder. Um, there was a time when I thought they would be on the same level like Omega, but definitely Omega also made some great releases over the, over the last two years. And now owning both, owning the Tudor Black Bay 58 and owning the Tudor, uh, the Omega Seamaster Pro Professional 300, I can say there's still the difference, yeah? So definitely Tudor is not yet on the level of Omega. I would still rank Omega uh, one grade higher than Tudor. And this leads us to the next watch, which is my Omega Seamaster Professional 300 with the blue dial. Yeah, you have this blue wave pattern dial, a blue ceramic bezel insert and the watch comes in 42 millimeters, is um, also not too thick, I think also in the range of 13 millimeters thickness, has a helium escape valve, as the name says, is 300 meters uh, water resistant with a screw down crown and inside 
Uh, what is also nice, you have a, a see-through case back and inside is the Calibre 8800 which has 55 hours of power reserve and uh, date complication as well. Hacking seconds feature of course. And this watch, now uh, the Tudor, we had the COSC certification and this watch is now METAS certified which is even a bit higher certification standard and the watch should run uh, even more precise and this one should run between 0 to plus 6 seconds a day while the COSC certification of the Black Bay 58 will let it run at around uh, minus 4 to plus 6 seconds a day. Yeah? So a bit uh, higher certification of this watch. Then on top you get the ceramic bezel which is more scratch resistant. You get a see-through case bag and now also in the clasp we have this uh, easy adjustment. So you see I can extend the bracelet within seconds. So in case I would wear it uh, with a dive suit or let's say more realistic, um, the weather is very humid, your wrist will expand a little bit and suddenly your bracelet feels too tight. Then with this watch you just use the micro adjustment and the watch will also fit to your wrist that is a little bit bigger during those humid and hot times. Yeah. So great watch overall, great features and this piece comes at a price point of around 6,000 US dollars. So already quite a jump from the Tudor of around $2,000 more. And now we are at the end already. So the last watch in my dive watch collection and by far the most expensive one is my Rolex Submariner Kermit. Uh, for this watch I waited around a year until I could finally pick it up from the Rolex authorized dealer. As you can imagine these watches are super 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 hard to get uh, but luckily my ID, ID made this dream come true for me so I was able to purchase this watch at the retail price of around 9000 500 US dollars I think and yeah as you probably also know this watch is trading at around 100% premium on the second hand market so it's trading at around 18,000 US dollars yeah so pretty unobtainable to buy at the second hand market unless you want to spend a massive premium and yeah this watch is of course absolutely amazing it has the 3235 movement inside which comes with a 70 hours of power reserve is a superlative chronometer and this means it's uh, certified to minus two to plus two seconds a day so runs even pr more precise than the uh, metas certified omega is 300 meters water resistant same like the omega but what i actually love is this um, yeah, more compact style on top it's thinner than the omega especially also the the case shape lets it appear a lot thinner the bracelet is very nice has a nice tapering i feel just higher quality compared to the omega bracelet i might get some hate for that yeah but to be honest i'm more of a rolex fanboy than omega even though i like omega i have a lot of omega watches but my heart is really linked to the rolex watches love the combination of the green ceramic bezel with the black dial super legible the magnifying lens on top of the crystal makes the date super legible and also not even that it also makes the watch look very interesting for me yeah so uh, sometimes if a watch is like yeah like perfectly symmetric it could be also a bit boring and for me this this magnifying lens um, yeah spices up the whole watch a lot so always super interesting to look at it of course inside the clasp there is also a micro adjustment you can see I can move this here so again uh, same feature like with the Omega in case your wrist uh, expands a little bit you can quickly adjust the bracelet on the go and the watch will always sit super comfortable on your wrist yeah and with that we have it this is my let me put this back my little collection of all the dive watches I said three luxury timepieces and four I would say maybe 
premium affordable watches if i could uh, to say it like that um yeah basically what i want to say is these pieces they will not break the bank um starting from 650 us dollars up to 1250 dollars but they are really good in keeping their value they are made in great quality you will probably they will probably outlast your lifetime and will always uh, run very precise never let you down made in a great quality all have a great water resistance and anyway dive watches i think are the most in demand uh, segment from the watch market and due to that as there's a high competition between the brands to deliver great dive watches you can get really a lot for your money yeah and every every watch collection should anyway have a dive watch and on top if you're new in the watch hobby maybe my advice would also start with a dive watch you get really good quality for your money these watches are super robust there's a great uh, selection from which you can decide and you won't be disappointed and with that we are at the end of the video guys thank you very much for watching let me know which is your favorite watch from my little dive watch collection in the comments below and with that see you in the next one bye bye